Welcome to your Daily Dopamine with Dr. Joe McCullough, where we deliver daily doses of education, entertainment, and inspiration. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Oh, yeah. Hey, welcome. Welcome, Corey. So today, we're talking about Alpha State. It is the optimal brainwave state to be in for learning, for taking in new information anytime you need your brain's laser-like focus. Silver Lining 788, welcome. <clears throat> so for those of you catching the replay, welcome. For those of you joining me live, thank you so much. My name is Joe McCullough, and today is part three of a three-part series on woohoo, the Alpha State Process. So I started this series on Monday, giving you a little overview about brain waves. Hey there, Glickar, welcome. Tuesday, I talked about the alpha state process, and then today, I'm gonna do a full review, and we're gonna do a little Q&A. Hey, Lily Blue, hello, Jay. So let me start with a little bit of background. I learned this process when I was working for a company called Quantum Learning, and I did something called Super Camp, which is an amazing seven to 10 day accelerated learning camp where we teach middle school and high school students life skills, learning skills, accelerated learning techniques. And I taught, hey there, Marcus, I taught quantum reading, which was basically speed reading for comprehension. And the very first step is getting into the optimal brainwave state. I missed the ask a physicist anything. I really wanted to know how accurate. Check it out. I'm going to be posting it on my YouTube channel today. Check out uh, Joe McCullough on YouTube. It was pretty cool. Lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so quantum learning. Uh, yeah, so I learned this. First step in the speed reading process, get your brain in the optimal brainwave state. I enjoyed it so much that I started doing it a ton on my own and then I started sharing it with my students. I lead my students through this before every quiz or celebration and actually today I ask them. So I lead them through it three or four times and then I ask them if they want me to continue doing it. So I pull them using a student response system. And out of both classes, one class, 95% of the students wanted me to continue doing it. The other class, 90%. So I was pretty happy about that. So again, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to review brain waves. Then I'm going to go through the alpha state process in detail and then lead you through it. And then if there's any questions, I'll do a little Q&A. So let's start with this whole concept of brain waves. What does it mean when you hear somebody talking about brain waves? I'm gonna turn this around and show you a couple slides, kind of in teacher mode for a second. Okay, and I'm sorry this is so dark. Jennifer, welcome. So most of you probably know that the cells that are responsible for thinking are called neurons. And we're all born with about the same number. That number is 86 billion. Quick little aside, how smart you are, how much you get accomplished has nothing to do with the number of neurons you're born with. Everyone has about the same number. It's what you do with those neurons that count. Okay, off of my high horse. Now, the way that neurons communicate with other neurons is through electricity. In essence, an electrical pulse, an impulse is sent from one neuron to another, and you can have hundreds of millions of neurons communicating at any one time. And they're sending these electrical signals between neurons and using a device called an EEG, an electroencephalogram, you can watch the electrical activity taking place in neurons. Now, without getting too technical, what you're plotting is voltage versus time. And what we've noticed is that certain kinds of brain waves correspond to certain types of mental activity. And there's four main kinds of brain waves, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And again, what a brain wave really is, it's just looking at the electrical activity in neurons. And what we're plotting is voltage as a function of time. What does alcohol do to those neurons? Oh, we might have to talk about that in a future scope. So when we're talking about brain waves, what we're really doing is looking at the electrical activity in the brain. And we're using something called these little things that you see are like little electrodes that me measure voltage as a function of time. And the reason it's called brain waves is because when you plot it, the signal kind of looks like a wave. 
and you go from beta, which has the highest frequency. I'm level with you, Joe. I'm a little. <laughs> we go from, <clears throat> excuse me, highest frequency is beta, delta is the lowest frequency. Delta is when we are deep in sleep, dreamless sleep. Beta is where we live most of our conscious adult lives. When we're in beta state, our focus is constantly shifting from one thing to another, which is great for everyday living. Things like driving, parenting, especially where your focus needs to shift a lot, it's really good. But if you want to access all of your brain's resources, if you want to take that focus, something like a laser, the state that you want to be in is called alpha state. Now there's certain things that you can do to help you get into alpha state and it is the optimal brainwave state to be in for learning, for taking in information, for test taking, anything where you really need to focus your brain's resources on one thing. Now, if you're a student or a musician and you've ever been in the zone where things just seem to fall into place and you're effortlessly doing things, you are in alpha state. So what I wanna do is give for you the process that I lead my students through before every quiz, before every celebration. It's designed to get them into alpha state and help them do better on their quizzes and exams. And my students love it. I find them doing it even as I'm not leading them through it. Hey there, Dr. Cuisine. I've been in alpha state. Awesome, Corey, thank you so much. And I've done this process literally probably about a thousand times. I do it before I read. I do it before I grade if I'm serious and focused on grading. I do it before I rock climb. I do it before any time when I really wanna feel like I'm focused on one thing and accessing my brain's total power. So what I'm gonna do is, hello from Argentina. I'm gonna turn this around and give you a screenshot or at least show you the nine steps I first learned this from quantum learning and then I modified it. I threw in a little bit of NLP. It's something that I didn't originate, but I tweaked it a bit and I lead my college physics classes through this. So let me turn this around. Going to, oh, I don't know if you can get all of that in. So if you can take a screen capture, I'll try and talk you through each step and then I'll show you them on index cards. In fact, let me just turn this once without woo, doing the whole thing. If you want to take a screen capture, do it now. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the very first step is delta state when you're asleep, then what is theta state? So theta state is right as you are first going off to sleep. You can also be in theta state in certain conscious states, but Research is showing that many of your memories are actually stored when you're in theta state, which is one of the reasons that sleep is so important for learning. Okay, so the very first step of alpha state process is a little cueing phrase that you say either to yourself internally or out loud. I say with my students, shift your state. And what you do is every time you do this process, you say the exact same phrase when you do that, it'll start to get anchored to being an alpha state. And eventually you can just say, shift your state, if that's what you're using, and your brain can shift into a more alpha-like state. Then what you're doing is sitting up straight, you are getting a more <clears throat> confident physical posture. You allow a deep breath in. Then I have my students close their eyes as you exhale quietly. Then what you do, is you picture your peaceful place in your mind's eye. And I'll go through what that is, but it's some place where you feel like you're at your best. You feel confident, you feel relaxed, you feel joyful, you feel at ease. Then, let me turn this one more time just so you can see it as I'm doing it. Then you continue to take slow, deep breaths, three or five, four or five slow, deep breaths. You allow the image to become brighter in your mind's eye. I'll talk about why. Then with your eyes still closed, you look straight up, then you look down, then you open your eyes and focus. So that was a quick little overview. What I'm gonna do is go through it one more time and then lead you through it and then see if there's any questions. Woo! Okay, so I wrote these steps out on index cards. And again, shoot some questions. Sorry, the comments have kind of flown by as I was talking, I didn't see them. And I will try to address them, but maybe actually wait till the end, I'll do a little Q and A. So the first thing is, hey there, Oscan. 
So we're going through, just for those of you joining late, the alpha state process. This is a nine-step process I lead my students through, designed to get them in the optimal brainwave state for learning, for test-taking, for processing, for receiving information. So the first thing is, I say the same phrase to them every single time. You could say anything you want. I say shift your state. Some semesters I've said shift into alpha state. What you're trying to do is starting to anchor, starting to condition that phrase with being into alpha state. So as soon as you say it, shift your state, you can start to get into a more alpha brainwave-like state. Explain why gravity seems much trickier than after vodka shots. <laughs> Gotta love Periscope. <laughs> Second one, you're just sitting up straight. You're getting a more confident physical posture. Our mental, emotional, and physical states are all connected. So when I get into a more confident physical state, it can affect my mental and emotional states. Then we allow a deep breath in. And then I tell my students, close your eyes as you exhale quietly. Now in reality, it doesn't matter when you close your eyes. I just like to actually see all of my students doing it. Then have them close their eyes and exhale quietly. The quietly is just so I don't have a bunch of people going. <sighs> then picture in your mind's eye your peaceful place. Now this is some place specific to you where you really feel like you're at your best. It doesn't even have to be a real place. It could be imaginary, but it's some place where you feel confident, relaxed, resourceful, joyful, and at ease. For me, it's a mountain range in New Mexico where my wife and I used to hike and climb and camp all the time. Every time I think about that place, it just makes me feel peaceful and joyful, and it's a great energy to be in, in terms of learning and taking in new information. So take a moment, think about where is some place that you really feel like you're at your best, you feel happy, you feel resourced, you feel at ease. Okay, commercial break done. <laughs> Step six, you continue to take slow, deep, breaths. It doesn't matter really how many, four or five, the more stressed you feel, the longer you might do it. Generally, you're breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, just taking some slow, deep breaths, and then you allow the image to become brighter. This has to do with NLP, and in terms of remembering and thinking about memories, the brighter, the more vibrant we think about it, the more realistic it can be. You can actually make a memory seem less daunting, less realistic by making it go from color to black and white. This is basically a form of quick meditation. Yes, it's a 30, 45 second process designed to get your brain into alpha brainwave state, or at least a more alpha-like state. And that's a great state to be in for focusing, for taking in information. So step seven was allow the image to become brighter and more vibrant. It makes it seem more realistic to you. Then with your eyes still closed, you look straight up. So your eyes are closed and you're looking straight up, then you look straight down. What you're doing when you're looking straight up is you're accessing your visual cortex when you're getting ready to take in visual information. And then when you look straight down, you're just ready to read or take the quiz. And then step nine is open your eyes and focus. Okay, so that's an overview. I'm going to lead you through this <laughs> on camera. I did this on Tuesday. It feels kind of funny leading some people I can't see through some relaxation process on my iPhone. But let's give it a try. Let me put on a little background music. Where's my mouse? Okay, uh, get on some background music. Okay. So I'm gonna lead you through this exactly the same way I lead my class through it. And then if there's any questions, when you take any, when you take ADH pills, are you artificially putting your brain into a more alpha mode? Oh, that's a great question. And I don't know the answer to that. Okay, so join me if you want. And again, your peaceful place is someplace specific to you. Could be a vacation spot, could be your house, could be a grandparent's house. It could be someplace in nature but where you feel great. You feel at ease, you feel confident, you feel like you're at your best. All right, hey there, JT. We're just about to do the alpha state process and then a little Q and A. All right, let me get a quick sip of water and here we go. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, please shift your state. Sit up straight. Allow a deep breath in. Close your eyes as you exhale quietly. And take a moment and picture in your mind's eye your peaceful place. This is some place where you feel calm, confident, relaxed, and at ease. Continue to take long, slow, deep breaths. Allow that image to become brighter and more vibrant, more realistic to you. And with your eyes still closed, look straight up, look down, open your eyes and focus. <laughs> Sorry to crack up there a bit at the end. Then actually to tell you the first time I led this through my class, I was nervous as hell. In fact, I wanted to leave my class through this for a couple semesters before I actually did. And now that I do, the students love it. They always want me to continue doing it. So that was it. It is really designed, okay, I'm in alpha state, teach me some physics. Tomorrow, I'm gonna teach some awesome physics. I'm gonna show you how you can freeze a wave, matrix style, I'm gonna freeze time. I know I've promised this before, but things have come up and I had liquid nitrogen last week that I had to show a great demo. So thank you for joining. Again, this was the alpha state process. It's a nine step process designed to get your brain in the optimal brainwave state for focusing. It's not just for students and test taking. Anytime you want your brain's resources available to you all on one focused task. I used to hate physics, but you made me change my mind. Physics rocks. If you hated physics and you had a bad physics teacher. <laughs> okay. Are there any questions that I can answer about this process? Again, I learned it from quantum learning. I taught it to my students. I modified it a bit and it's something I lead them through before every quiz and or celebration, which is what I call an exam. And if you're catching this late, you can check out the replay. I'm also going to use this video as a weekly blog on my site, joemccullough.com. All right. If there's no questions then I will sign out, thank you for the hearts. I'll pause for like another 10 seconds. While I'm pausing, let me just say, check me out tomorrow. I'm gonna to show you an awesome physics demo, probably one of the coolest ones you've seen. And then on Saturday, I'm gonna show an awesome magic trick. Do your students' grades improve? That's a great question. The answer is I don't know because I never took any sort of pre-data and post-data. When I finally decided to do it, I started teaching it in every class I teach. Every semester, I tend to teach different classes. Great job, thank you so much. Okay. If you're not following me, press that button and follow. I have some awesome scopes coming up on here every day. Titles makes it too long to share. Oh, that's a great thing to know. I will have to make my titles shorter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, my name is Joe. I will see you hopefully sometime in the near future. Have an awesome Thursday.